And Nathan, what do you think is the biggest issue facing voters in Otaki? It's all to do with infrastructure here. I'm going to fight to get Transmission Gully built. We need to get on and get the bulldozer started on the Western Link Road, which is going to connect up Pararapararimu and Waikanae. Here's a little song about how our clever Minister of Transport managed to traumatise the entire community and then make it look as if it was our idea that he'd take our two-lane Western Link Road and turn it into a four-lane motorway monstrosity. We see them rubbing their hands, we hear them making their plans every morning. This government has done things with numbers that you would not believe. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And there were three tunny farms. The Prime Minister, Mr Joyce and Nathan Guy. They are responsible and they aren't. So they need to go. They turn the place into a zoo. So that's a huge, huge cost. And that happens right length of the coast and right through the heartland of Kapiti. That happens. It will impact everybody. Oh no. Hey, hey. Well, Mr. Stephen Joyce has put his choices on the table. It's always been his plan to get his hands on a link if he's able. He sucks and all his chugging or chucks are misguided. But we will stand in the way of his big motorway undivided. That's right. Well, I get so angry, why can they understand? It's so short sighted. We're here to make a stand. Charlotte. Mark and I and all the people who helped make this film are representing the ordinary people of the Kapiti Coast from all parts of the political spectrum and from all walks of life who are alarmed about what the government is planning to do to the Kapiti communities of Ramati, Paraparomu, Waikanae and further north. That's me with my fellow Kapiti Coasters, Val, Stephen, Rowan and Kimbra. We're about to walk the route of a road designated to go through the heart of the Kapiti district. I wasn't there that day, but I'm here to help Mark tell the story of how our plans for a community link road along this route were hijacked by central government politicians and how our local council turned their backs on the community. It's the tale of a seaside community threatened to be divided by a road built for trucks. We made this film because Kapiti Coasters are getting a bad deal. Our plans for a community link road have been bulldozed instead for a four to eight lane expressway, more accurately a motorway or autobahn. We're not anti-road. In this film, we'll show you how good our local solution was and how bad we believe the proposed motorway would be, not just for Kapiti, but for New Zealand. Our already planned local solution provided roading from Ramati to Waikanae alleviating 25% of the traffic at peak times and 70% at other times. It promised a second bridge over the Waikanae River, which everyone, everyone in the district wants. Our local plan provides an holistic 21st century approach and includes upgrading public transport and the current State Highway 1, while still preserving Kapiti's unique and peaceful environment. 
The Autobahn would destroy our green space, bulldoze through people's homes and change our iconic district forever. We hope this film will shed some light on the underhand tactics of the central government and other parties. We aim to expose the disrespect shown by politicians and their vested interests. And we will show that the road is not only bad environmentally and socially, but also economically. Finally, we want to inform people about what they can do to make sure our children don't turn to us in the future and say, how did you let this happen? Well, Charlotte and I are talking about we this and we that. Just who are we? We're ordinary people. From all walks of life. From across the political spectrum. Some of us would be losing our homes. Some of us live nowhere near the proposed road. But we all feel affected. We all believe Kapiti would be negatively impacted forever. And we've all been on the massive learning curve. About the actions of our central land local government. And we are all convinced that this expressway is a very, very bad idea. Bully boys. I think that the minister came in and uh, someone put that proposal to him and he just adopted it without thinking about the whole thing. Well, from the people I've spoken to, I've found about 80% uh, against the Western Expressway but want the Western, the link road, the old two-lane link road. And 10% are absolutely for the Western Expressway and about 10% haven't really thought about it and think, well, the government's going to do it anyway, so why bother? If there's a sufficient and concerted effort to stop something, it can be stopped. And this is a classic example. Oh, the cost of fuel's only going to go up, and uh, the more it goes up, the more we're reliant. You know, basically, if you buy into building motorways, you're buying into needing to use oil. I've seen an artist's impression of what their motorway would look like going through our region and it's like um, it just doesn't belong there when you look at the environment and the, this big thing dividing our, our community because that's what it will do um, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense and it would just it would divide and it, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense it's going to be noise and sound pollution if you like and it's going to be no benefits I mean, if people in Kapiti think it's going to give a benefit to the community they're dreaming it's, it's not at all So let's hear what our local Kapiti Coast District Council had to say KCDC's submission to NZTA in 2009 made three points First, the two lane Western Link Road should be completed as soon as possible Second, the rail system should be upgraded to support the efficiency of the road network and thirdly, improvements to State Highway 1 could be completed once the Western Link Road was in place. And we want to make it clear that we're only walking Stage 1 of our local Western Link Road, because we don't see any need for Stages 2 or 3. That morning, before the trek, our modest film crew visited residents of the southern entrance whom NZTA, the New Zealand Transport Agency, had told were losing their homes to make way for the expressway. 25 acres of tranquil lifestyle properties where some had created their slice of paradise on the Kapiti coast. Trees, homes, gardens, all gone to make way for the expressway. Well, it was a sad day at the end of November when NZTA officials rolled up and told us that a motorway would be going through our property, right where we're standing now. Amid this, this beautiful green, there's a sign over there that says, uh, I put it up, and it says, uh, look out, creatures. This is just to warn people driving up here to beware. There are bird, bird life, um, uh, guinea fowl roaming around here. This is a green 25 acres, and NZTA and uh, uh, No Choice Joyce are going to roll a motorway through it. 25 acres lost to the people of Kapiti, basically. And no matter how much they say we'll twig it, we'll, we'll make it beautiful, we'll mitigate, etc., etc., it won't ever be the same again. And Kapiti really needs, just like the corner of the park, we really need to preserve this. It was a sad day. The process of notification and so-called consultation divided members of the community. NZTA had given two options for the southern entrance of the expressway bulldoze through Tira School or cut off the end of Leinster Ave, and the media honed in on the divisions. But the principal of Tira School stressed the need for unity. I just so hope the unity at the community will unite and really understand what we actually would get 
and at the moment is still this sad misunderstanding that it's a link road and that it's the Western Link Road and viewers, um, it's, it's a fundamentally different concept yeah. and I hope Community Region can unite and really strongly oppose it and that will be heard. At the southern end of stage one of the Western Link Road, Raumati Road would join and tunnel through the sand hill up towards State Highway 1, the impact on the people in Rata Road being minimal when compared to the government's proposed motorway, which is in fact a realignment of State Highway 1 through the heart of our seaside community. A road they think is so important that they've given it a special name, a road of national significance. Whatever that means. By now, our friend Am had joined us in our trek north to the river in Timawana Road in Waikanae Beach the northern end of stage one of the Western Link Road. Yeah, I'm Dieter and I'm from Germany. I'm just living four years here in Kapiti. Yeah, and we thought we could have a good lifestyle here, quiet and yeah. But now they want to build this expressway here and I can't believe that what they want to do there. Yes, we have to stop this concrete monster, I have to say. It will kill Kapiti, yeah. I'm Susie and um, I am from the area, um, but I lived a long time in Germany. And first we traveled around uh, the country a couple of years ago and were looking for a spot to live, you know, several places. But at last we picked then Kapiti again, you know, it's, it's lovely and I came from here and I don't know. It, it's the place you want to stay, to live and have everything, you know, it's it's the place of life, his life, but I think it's going to be killed. <laughs> so I wouldn't like to move from here, but if they would build the expressway at that location now, uh, we would certainly live, leave the place here. This same morning, locals were at Waikanae Station giving some heat to Transport Minister Stephen Joyce and local MP Nathan Guy. The balloons represent the number of properties destroyed by the proposed expressway. Nathan Guy originally backed our local community road plans, but changed his mind when his boss, Stephen Joyce, told him about his Think Big plans for a massive new motorway. 